most valuable professional. He's also a Microsoft certified trainer and uh, not just an MTT, but he has been regional lead for about six years now. And uh, one thing I would say she is also known for is his mind blowing innovative ideas. So I hope he's going to be talking us through a few of them today. Then we also have uh, Michael Adekoya. Michael Adekoya is a data engineer and an analyst as well. He's an MCT, that's a, a Microsoft certified trainer. And basically, Michael designs enterprise BI solutions with best practices and standards. It seems we have lost Olana. Yes, I thought it's from my end. So okay, Olana, I thought it was on. Yeah, I guess something I is with the network. Okay. So, well, we we just have to continue. I'm very sure Olana will join us shortly once she is able to put back our system. So, and the third speaker for today we actually be we have three speakers we have she will be talking about on azure we have binga michael that will be talking about sql and finally we have clement who is our ai guru so clement will also be talking about ai so today's section will majorly be on introduction we want to introduce the group, introduce some busy things we'll be talking about. And as from next week, we'll be having two streams. There'll be a stream that will be dedicated on data, another stream that will be dedicated on AI. So please, I want us to listen to this introduction section, after which you know the stream you would like to join as from next week. So Sheyi, how are you? I hope you are good to go. Hello, Shayi, can you hear me? Hello, I hope everybody can hear me. Can somebody yes, confirm? I can. Yes, I can. Yes, 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 we can hear you. OK, great. Yes, so we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, we can yeah, hear you, OK. You are perfectly welcome. So she will be taking us through the basic things about Azure. We have been hearing about Azure. Let's understand what Azure has to offer us. And for the next 15 minutes, she will take over the stage and give us all what we need to know, introducing us to Azure. And after that, Binga will take over, telling us all what you need to know about SQL Server, on premises in the cloud, and so many things around SQL. And finally, after that, Clement will take over to open our eyes, introducing us to AI and everything around AI. And please, if you have your question, you can drop it on the comment chat or you can raise your hand. So once you raise your hand, the moderator, which is our Abu Olana, will always let the speaker know about this and we can take it over from there. Sheyi, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Deji. Um, I'm currently having an issue with my PowerPoint presentation. Um, I will just share it in a brief. Uh, but before then, um, I really want to um, welcome you all again to this um, to this event, which uh, is like a line slide for us in Africa, especially looking at the way the data technology is increasing. And um, um, this uh, this this particular one is just to en enable us to energize us to see what it takes to have. Um, what is the technology all about? How do you use this technology? So I'll just go briefly into this by uh, giving you some basic thing about Azure. Then I would like to take you to the portal to show you in real time what an Azure uh, environment actually look like. Now um, I'll be sharing my uh, my slide briefly now. Um, 
Yes, um, I had some issue with the PowerPoint earlier. I think it's stable now. Can you guys see my slide yet? Not yet, Steve. Okay. Can you see it now? Okay, it's coming up. It's coming up, okay? Yes. So, um, you can see it. Okay, good. So, I'll share my, make it on this um, slide mode. Okay, so um, introduction to Azure, and just as Olana um, tried to introduce me, uh, my name is Sheyi Oluwa Wumiju. Oh, sorry, there is an S there. Uh, my name is Sheyi Oluwa Wumiju. Um, I'm a Microsoft certified um, professional. I'm also one of the MVP in Nigeria, and my own uh, area is um, on office hubs and services. And uh, that is my mail, my LinkedIn, and you can follow me at S Ulua Umiju. Now, um, talking about Azure, I, I, I want your mind to be, um, when you talk of cloud technology, there's some aspect that I, I want you to look at very well, critically, and that's why I like to quote this man. His name is um, Terence Mackinnon. Mackinnon. He said that most people that just live for time our people don't, don't really have plans. That means you must endeavor to ensure that you have a plan. The future is changing. And the reality we have here is that as far as technology is concerned, gradually we are moving to a point where things is not the way we look at it. So in this introduction, I'm going to take you to what we call digital transformation and look at cloud force, mobile force change that Microsoft is offering. Then I said briefly, I'm going to take you through um, um, a demo on showing what Azure Portal is all about. Now, what's digital transformation? Now, the transformation is just like a runner. Now you can see everybody is on the race when it comes to technology. And as far as I'm concerned, it's not about how you start is the ability for you to visualize what you can do, your, your steadfastness, your focus to understand the changes around you. Now, when you start this, then you must start preparing. Preparation includes trying to look at technology over there. You can go into several technologies to find out. Now, once you have that, you need to build your brand. Building your brand is exercising yourself in taking what is at stake to make your brand known. Technology has changed in terms of um, the mobile force. We talk of trying to look at people that have gone before you, like people that have offering out there, like Microsoft that we are talking about, Azure. Train with them, train with their, their, their facility, ensure you have skill that can, uh, because in, there you can see anybody can overtake you in this age and this time. So digital transformation is just giving you an insight to understand that we have moved from a digital estate, which we are all aware of, which is on-prem, where we have our server, we have our own firewall, we are managing it ourselves. All this has changed. Now the question now is that, are you ready to be focused and to ensure that you change your plan? Now, this now brings me to the next thing. We have the past. In the past, let's just take a true, a true back to the past. In the past, when typewriter came in, it was the end of revolution at that time from the 18th century where you have typewriter. You can see everybody can use typewriter. They use it to type information from the brain, from your understanding, and you're putting it on the paper. Then the paper shall be transmitted to another point. Then after that age of typewriter, of machine, that came the age of tech. Te te techno uh, telecommunication, where you have massive telecom firm having gadgets that you can see here, and those gadgets are actually used for transmitting information across several sector. Now they could be able to communicate. The, uh, then Graham and Bell came with the with the telephone, where you can communicate with people. Then after that re evolution, another revolution came in, which is the train injection of train into the system 
increased transportation, the engine was massively produced, and things started changing. But you can see at that time, we are still scrutinized and streamlined into a particular point. We are concentrated on a particular point. But there's a turning around now. The turning around that we have now is not just about the cloud technology. It's not about the mobile force technology. We are talking of software enabled environment, an environment that I can build my infrastructure, not just having server. I can build my server on a software using Kubernetes, using Docker, using every other aspect of software enabled soft, um, solution environment. Now coming to the cloud, what is the cloud generally? Some people consider it to be a mix. But cloud technology is just provider, providing you an avenue, an area, a space by which you can work. You pay them for those services, they take the overload from you. Instead of you buying server, instead of you buying coolant, um, um, AC, making, getting a space in your data center, you are saying, I'm giving all these stacks to the provider like Microsoft, give me an environment that I can use to be able to work on my services. And these services are been streamlined into several things. Now it's moving us to a future, and that future is giving us limited possibility. With cloud technology, we are seeing major thing is coming in AI, which is part of what we are doing here in terms of security, building, um, building structures that can easily be done by using LLS creating manufacturing, manufacturing and building industry by using facts and devices that can you tap into the cloud technology and make engineering, engineering devices, engineering equipment, engineering production to be smooth. Now we are coming to an age that you just sit down in your car and the car will be moving. And that is what cloud technology can give us. It can empower us. Not only that, we know that even in our workspace, things are changing. Where, you know, in an old workspace where we have a containerized office, the location is centralized, uh, decisions are very slow because you have to carry your paper from another one. We are coming to an age, which is the modern age with the cloud technology, where you can collaborate in the real time, just as we are doing now. I am sitting in my room. You all guys are out there. Some of you are in Nigeria. Some of you are in Lagos. Some of you might not be in Lagos. And all you are seeing is someone communicating to you via some devices and through a software called Team. All this is what innovative that is coming up. And in this age, in the cloud enabled environment, we are seeing that it's all going to be powered by, 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 by software. Now, collaboration is making it easy. I can talk to anybody. I can source from learning from any point as far as I have internet and I can have access to the cloud technology. And it also brings transparency. It encourage accountability. Now, these are all what is going on. Now, it's bringing me to a point here that the world has changed. Whether we like it or not, cloud technology has come to stay. Now, in early 2020, something happened, an eruption happened all over the world, starting from what happened in China, whether it was inten whether it was intentional, whether it was an experiment, whether it was something they could not control, coronavirus started off from China, it spread to the whole world. Now we are in an age, whether you like it or not, you have to move your digital estate. You have to move the way you operate. You have to move what you are doing from the, the traditional way to a cloud-enabled environment. You have to move. Now we are, we are coming back now. The new state stand here is an hybrid, showing you that the cloud has come to stay and this also has, um, has given us an insight that changes has come to stay. So now let's look at the cloud force, mobile force change that Microsoft is offering. Now, under Microsoft, for its own concept about digital um, transformation, there are three basic pillars. The first pillar is the cloud. And which I just emphasize, which I'm going to talk about. Other people like um, Michael is going to give you the aspect of the data. Why um, 
um, Clement is going to give you the aspect of the intelligence, which comes the AI, the IoT, all those things that is coming up from the emergence of the data and the emergency of emergence of the cloud. So in order to accelerate digital transformation, cloud has given you power from the engine. You have machines, high level servers that are out there that you can subscribe for, that you can pay for, and you can scale this server according to your need. You can either take it up or lessen it, depending on your production. You can create application that can go to a default operation that you don't need to first release your software, release your application, get feedback from your consumers. You can do all at the same time. Use that develop process. You can create an environment where you can create your infrastructure, including your firewall, including your system by using Kubernetes, by using Docker. All this is sitting on the cloud. Then the data aspect come of it, where you can use SQL Server to create your data warehouse using Synapse, using modern day architecture to protect those data, whether they are on, they are, they are moving, whether they are on, they are stable in a place, and you can now mine this data by using intelligence. Telling us the change that we're about to see using cloud, showing that cloud technology means bringing them together, binding everybody together, ensuring that everything is binded, enhanced, and um, collaboration is at, at the speak that everybody can have access to information at any time, anywhere. Now, let's look at cloud model. And this is a model that Microsoft is using. And that model, because I have 15 minutes, there's a lot of slide there. So I am just marking my time so that I will not go beyond my time. Please, Olana, when I'm about, let me know. Um, um, cloud model, generally, um, as I said, digital estate has changed. Now, what we know of our IT, when we started IT way back then, we know that everything we manage ourselves, from the application to the data, to the midware, to the operating system with virtualization, if you want to virtualize your environment, to the server, to the storage, to the networking, everything is done by IT department. Now, what it means that on-prem, which is the norm we are used to in the past, is that, and it's still relevant with the hybrid environment coming in now, what we are saying here is that with the on-prem environment, we are saying we have all our servers, all application being built from ground up. That means I have to purchase servers. When I purchase those servers, I need to install the operation system, operating system on it. After installing the operating system, I need to bring my data that I need to run on it. I need to create an environment, whether it's virtual, whether it's physical, and I need to have a storage to keep those information that I've I've, I've, I've implemented over time and I need to create a way by which people can have access. In those days, what we do is to create a VPN. A VPN is a way by which people that are, that a remote access, remote users has been for, for ages. Now, in those days, it's just that it's cumbersome. The way we operate it then, we are going to create a VPN on our system. We ensure we enable some users to have that VPN. They can actually have access to that data wherever they are, especially when they're on the move, when they have traveled, and they need to have access to some vital information in the office. They need to go through that. So the on-prem system is stationary. It's containerized. It's in the one spot. That means you, have, you need to put more investment to make it what mobile force you need to put more investment to make it your user to have ability to have access to it anywhere now the cloud technology has three major models now the first model is the infrastructure as a service now infrastructure as a service is generally saying microsoft please provide me with the virtual environment provide me with a server provide me with a storage and the networking, I'll pay for it. Now, with the cloud technology, which is acronym Azure technology for Microsoft, is actually you pay as you go. You don't need to buy all those infrastructure. We can see most time with the on-prem system, you have to change, if you have a refresh to make now, you have to change everything all over, going to a new technology. You format your system, all those waste of time and resources is a thing of the past. Now, the change that has come now is that 
I might want to maintain my server. I might want to have a virtual environment on Azure, or probably I tell Microsoft, I want to put my server in your data center, which I pay according to my usage. Then give me the environment, ensure I have a normal um, storage, ensure I have the networking. Now, what am I going to bring? I need to bring the application I want to run on that. I need to bring the data I want to mine on that. I need to provide the malware and install my operating system that I have to come with my license and install it. That means I'm, I'm actually being provided an infrastructure as a service from Microsoft. Now, if I move on, the other model we have is platform as a service. Now, platform as a service now, now is a little bit uh, different from infrastructure as a service. With platform as a service, we are seeing the networking, the storage, the networking, the storage, the server, the virtual environment, which we are going to, if we are going to use the virtual environment, the operating system, the malware, and the runtime are actually being managed by Microsoft. Wow. What are we seeing here? I am seeing here with this Azure, um, with this model, which is provided by Azure, what we are seeing now is that everything I need to have is done. All I need to pay for is to bring my data, I, I, all I need to bring in is my data and the application I want to mine it. And it's very good for SQL Server. You might want to run um, um, your, your SQL Server and mine your data from there, where all other things about operation, about cooling is done by Microsoft. The last form of services that we have now is the software as a service. Now, this is just like you are going to a restaurant now. Now, how many of us are used to Amalaputs? I know some of us are legal negotiants, and um, I know before I got married that um, someplace we always visit. Now, Amalaput now, I, 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 going there is um, a way of going to a modern day restaurant. And what you need is just to tell the woman, the, 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 the service person there, that I need Amala a certain amount. I need certain meat. I want you to scanish you to beg it with every other thing and bring it to my table. Now, what the provider, which is the, the Amala joint, will do is to bring the Amala in the, in, the, in, in the plates with everything you need and bring it on your table, put water there, put everything there. All you need to do is to eat, wash your hands, and pay for that service. That means I don't have to do anything. As an IT professional, when you are using software as a service, we are saying Microsoft is providing everything for you, from the application to the data you are going to use, to the malware, to operating system, to the virtual environment if you want to extend or expand it, or the server, the storage, and even the networking is provided by Microsoft. All you need to do is to pay for that service. And that's where M365 volume where we have massive adoption in that environment, massive adoption in Teams and the rest, all these are binded under the software as a service. Now, the question now to us is that, uh, because of my time, there are a lot of things I want to talk about Azure, and that's why I use that. There are other things that is coming up on Azure, so many other services, that comes on the software as a service, like Active Directory, you can have it as a service now. You can have your SQL. So many applications have been run as a service now. Why? Because they look at the need. The cloud technology, Azure itself, is giving you a benefit to run your environment outside just your environment because Microsoft has several data centers across the world where they, are, they have increased from 46 data center. Now, each of these data center is paired. That means it has both uh, the, fourth, uh, the first and the second. Now, we have one in Africa, which is residing in South Africa. We have peer of, two pairs of it. Now, the essence of this philosophy is that if your data center, one of them is down, the other one can also come up. And in times of redundancy, in times of storage, in times of creativity in terms of keeping your data. You can spread your data across other data center as long as you have access to that location. So Azure is bringing technology close to us. 
Azure is giving us an environment. And statistics have said that Azure has been one of the best over the time. And um, it started uh, gradually from, uh, from just being a uh, uh, Microsoft offering uh, to come up as the best um, cloud technology over there. Recently, um, I don't know the current rate, but they've all, they are almost first or second as a last count showing us that Azure has come. So we are going to look at a demo now where I quickly um, try to log into my Azure. And how do you log into your Azure? Um, there is what we call Azure portal. Now the Azure portal has um, the home. Now the home, um, the home environment gives you uh, understanding of everything you have. Now, let me just take you through the Azure portal. You can see it tells me my subscription in terms um, where I, I, what subscription I have. Now it's at the, at, at the extreme right, you have your name where now for every individual that want to have access to Azure, you must have an account created for you on the Active Directory. Now the Active Directory hosts your name. It can either be a corporate environment which is customized with a domain or like my own, which I'm using here, is my Microsoft account, which is my Hotmail account, which is mapped to Azure. So either it is a corporate account or an account that you have that is mapped into Azure. Now, under Azure, we have, you have other things here. Now, if you want to, um, you know, with Azure te technology, there's also the issue of um, PowerShell. Now, PowerShell is a commandlet system. Now, for each of Microsoft offering, their commandlet have been created that can enable you to automate your environment, whether it's concerning a specific product, whether it's Azure, or it is a um, product like SharePoint, you can actually run a command on that. Now with Azure, you have a connection that can easily connect you with your cloud or your power cloud PowerShell. Now under the Azure services, now let's now go to the extreme right, extreme left rather. Sorry to you have, you, Shay, but uh, try to round up. Okay, thank you. So let me just take you through other things here. We have other things. You have your dashboard, all the other services. You can create resources. You can create virtual machine. You can also look at your active directory. You can also have analysis. Now, in terms of cost management, you can manage your cost. As I said, you can either scale up or scale down. Then you have other resources that you can, like log analytics gives you a way by which you know how your application, your services that run on it. Now, by the stream right, other things like monitoring, you can talk to the support, you can look at the security that is enabled for you, you can also ask for advice. Now, all these things come under the offices of Azure. Now, I don't know if there's any question because uh, my, the, uh, the moderator have already said I should be rounding up. So if you have any question, let me have those questions. Okay, so Shay, before um, you know the rest of us come up with our questions, I know like like me, a lot of people have uh, questions they would want to ask you, right? So I have seen all the exciting things, right? Having my infrastructure and my data in the cloud allows me to, and all the models I can actually use, uh, the IaaS, the PaaS, and the SaaS. So my question is, just like every other person here who might be wondering. What guarantee do I have that, you know, I won't wake up one day or one morning and all of my infrastructure has crashed? How do I know that my data is, you know, safe out there in the cloud? How do I know that Microsoft does not have access to my data? How do I know that they are not out there knowing all of my business? So uh, okay. I need you to, you know, put, put, put my concerns or my worries in place and say, okay, this is what, uh, you know, Microsoft have put in place to guarantee all of this are not going to happen. So how do okay. I uh, convince people to live on premise and, you know, come up to the cloud? Okay. Um, just as I said um, earlier, um, Microsoft technology, especially the Azure technology in terms of uh, uh, data security is uh, top notch. 
and um, it has been built up under um, a, a, a legal agreement between you and Microsoft. So definitely what it means is that as far as Microsoft is concerned, once it's signed your data, you have all the right over your data, not Microsoft. Now, if you notice and you have, have a contact with support and you try to tell them to do something on your environment, they will ask you, do you allow us to do this? You know why? Because they manage that a tool they have used, especially from the compliance area, where they have to follow every rules, all the, all the regulation that define your relationship, especially in the cloud technology. Now, apart from that, it had several security outfits that ensure your data is secured from them and from the outside world. Now, let me give you a, a, like, um, a little understanding. Now, there was one time I was, I was in Seattle and um, they were talking about the security aspect of Microsoft, especially for M365. Then I got to know that it, there are several teams that manage security. They are the red team, they are the blue team. Now, each of these teams, what they do is that they are hackers, security experts that have been grouped together to ensure they keep penetrating on Azure environment to see whether there's a flaw. And they ensure that they see whether somebody can even hack into your data. They do it regularly and they're expanding. Now, with the artificial intelligence, which is the third aspect I got to know, that there is a solution that runs through all the Azure cloud technology for M365 to pass to IaaS and they fish out data, mine those data, use those data to create an, a secure net for you. That if anything is happening in South Africa, there is a breach because of a particular password. They can easily alert you on M365 that certain blah, 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 can you upgrade? Can you increase? Can you secure your environment by following this policy? So we have other things that have been put in place like compliance, there are some okay. things that have been put on regulation, there are things that we, once you follow those, uh, those strict, um, strict, um, strict uh, information and guidance, I can tell you, Azure, with time now, um, over the years, there have been so many arc details that have happened, especially during coronavirus. Azure has not been mentioned as one that was penetrated. Others was penetrated. So I can okay. assure you that, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Shay. So if we have questions, please, you can unmute, ask your questions, or you can just drop them in the chat. Shay is going to be available to attend to all of our questions. Thank you so much. It was great having you speak. Uh, our next um, facilitator, Michael Adekoya, is going to be taking us through, um, you know, all the bits that we can achieve using Circle on Azure. Um, Michael, you're up. Hello, Alana. Hi. Yeah, this is actually about me. Can you, uh, I would like to say to talk about Azure pricing. Yes, please go ahead. What question, Afis? I said I would like to say you to talk about uh, pricing, pricing of Azure. Oh, oh okay. pricing. Uh, yes, yeah. Azure uh, pricing. So how do yeah, I pay you, what I yeah. use? Yeah, because of my time, I couldn't really um, go into the um, the portal to show you that. Now, the pricing uh, depend. One thing about pricing is it's an advantage IT have today with the cloud technology. You only pay for what you want to use. And that is just the basic. Now, the pricing of Azure um, in terms of the SaaS, in terms of the, which is M365, in terms of the pass, which is the one you can pay for, or if you want to spin up a virtual machine, you just need to look at, there is what we call a price, Azure price calculator. Now, tell Azure what you want to achieve with your application, what is necessarily needed to achieve that. Azure Calculate for you gives you what is needed. Now, you can also look at your industry trend. How do you work? Sometimes you, for people that is in the um, in, in a data space, you know, it's not every time that some people are seasoned in their business. Maybe December, the season of, um, of buying clothes, and you might need more resource. You buy, those, you buy your Azure to meet that resource. 
when it's in January or February, you reduce your cost. So that advantage gives you a precise advantage in terms of pricing. So if you go to Azure Calculator, it can give you, I can't give you a definite thing now because of my time, but go to Azure Calculator, understand one, the business you want to run, understand what you want to achieve, place it on the calculator, it gives you the precise price for your Azure, um, Azure need. Okay, thank you so much, Shay. So maybe we're going to consider having, you know, Azure pricing as, um, you know, a topic and would have one of our professionals come take us and how we can go about uh, putting our pricing together on Azure using the Azure calculator. So if we need that to happen, uh, we just need to make that request and I'm sure uh, the community would bring a professional up here for us to take us through all the pricing models uh, on Azure. Thank you so much. Michael, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, can, can you hear me? Please confirm if you can hear me. Sorry? Okay, okay. you can hear me yes, right? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you. All right, so good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are in part of the world. My name is Michael Adekoya, and then I'll just be taking us in the first meeting edition of our African Data and AI Group, taking us the introduction on um, Azure SQL. So basically, what I'll be doing is I'm meant to talk about Azure, so talk about SQL, but with particular focus on Azure SQL. So I'll just try to go through what SQL is, what SQL does, you know, and all the paparazzi around SQL. I can see that our time is, you know, is really gone, but yeah, thank you to our guy. He has done justice. So I'm meant to talk for 15 minutes, but I'll try and minimize that to 10 minutes. However, if you have any questions, even during while, while I was even during my because of my presentation, just drop the message. You know, just drop it in the text box there, uh, in the you know chat box there, and then I'll look at it and then answer you so that the other presenter can have um, his own time too. Because we don't want to exceed the one hour. Just have 20 minutes left. Okay, so let's do justice. So I'm a DWBI developer. I'm working on you know data warehouse end to end from beginning of the process to the end of the process. So let's go to the business of the day. Okay, SQL, what is SQL? And of course, I want to believe that at the point in time, we must have heard about SQL, SQL this, SQL that, and a lot of stories, the history and all of that. So I, you know, I'll be very fast with my, with everything I'm talking about, just touch just very few important things there. Now, the first thing I want to talk about SQL here that I have here is that SQL is very simple yet powerful. And then um, the database, you know, access language. Now, this is one thing I was just going to say about this SQL from this um, slide. SQL is a non-procedural language, and I'll explain that. When you say, when you say a language is a non-procedural language, that means it's the kind of language that, when in the course of writing, you don't need to tell the algorithm or the engine how to do what it should do. Instead, just tell the algorithm, this is what I want to do. For example, I want to go outside. That is non procedural The algorithm will figure out itself, and if it needs to do so, whatever, whatever, whatever it needs to do, it will do that on its own, and then just make sure you find yourself outside. Unlike the other languages that are procedural languages, like the likes of say maybe Java, C sharp, and what have you, in a situation in, where you are using languages like that, you can't just say I want to go out. You have to say okay, open the door one, um, walk out two, then okay, whatever, whatever, you know, vanish outside. Even if, even if it is meant and, and what have you. However, in SQL, it's non procedural language, so you don't need to tell, tell the algorithm how to do whatever you want it to do. Just tell it what you want to achieve, and then it will just do it for you. So that's, that, that's the more, um, one of the important things we need to understand about um, um, SQL as a um, database access language. Then, of course, SQL is an acronym for Structured Query Language. Uh, it allows you to access and manipulate databases. And then, uh, of course, a lot of story here. You can see the standard, American National Standard Institute, the ANSI 1986, blah, 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 and what have you. Um, so now the question is, what can SQL do? Yeah, a, lot, a whole lot, SQL can do a whole lot. I'll just pick maybe three of these, and then I'll just try to you know, explain. It said SQL can execute queries against a database. So when you have a database, you can actually use the SQL language, access language, you know, to 
execute queries. And queries are like um, uh, maybe instructions, are like um, commands that you you know you issue to the to the database to either to school data, to retrieve data from the database, and to manipulate data to do a whole lot on the database. So let me pick another one that says um, you can retrieve data. Now, yeah, SQL can create. Okay, he said SQL can create new tables in a database. Yes. So with the SQL language, you can actually use that to create new tables in a database, delete tables, and whatever. And the last one that says that SQL can set permissions on tables, procedures, and views. Yes, when you have in a database that is made up of tables or schemas or objects um, or record entities, whether vertical, horizontal, and what a view, you can actually use your SQL language to set permission. Who have access to this? Um, user A. I only want user A to have access to table A. I want user B to have access to table B and all of that. That's what it means by it. permissions. You can actually grant permission, set permissions, you know, select permissions and what have you, and all of that. Okay, so let's go next thing. What do we have here? He said SQL is a standard, but yes, SQL is a standard, but although SQL is a blah blah blah, and see, there are different versions of SQL language. Yes, however, to be compliant with this ANSI standard, that is the ANSI standard, the whole support at least the major commands. So there are some major commands when you're using this language that all the versions of SQL or different versions of SQL that we have, the whole support, because they are, you know, they are, they, they are in a similar, they all operate in a similar manner. So the, the, the major command that they all support is the likes of select, update, delete, insert, and where, and where the web, the web uh, uh, clause. So next, moving on, we said, okay, yeah, RDBMS. So RDBMS stands for Relational Database Management System. So this relational database management system is actually the basis for SQL. That is, SQL operates on relational database management. And when you say something is relational database, like relational database, from relation, relationship, you know, you re you're related. So we're saying that there are different tables or different data stores where data are stored that are related. So SQL operates on that basis of relationship. Where you can have the information of father of daddies in one table, the information of mommies in one table, the information of um, children in another table. And then with SQL, because there's a relationship between all of these tables, you can actually use SQL, you know, to manipulate those data, to massage those data, to you know clean those data, to bring those data together, and then to do a lot of transformation on those data with SQL. So the data in RDBMS is stored in a database object called tables. The table is a collection of related data entities, blah, 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 columns and rows and what have you. So that's just, you know, a little about our DBMS. OK, let's move our type. Now, Azure SQL. Now, Azure SQL, you know, I said we'll be talking basically on Azure SQL. Azure SQL now is this. It's the cloud computing database service. Before Azure SQL, like um, Moshe rightly mentioned, there is the part we call on-prem and on-cloud. The on-prem is where you have all your infrastructure, everything you have to struggle, your hardware, look for the, uh, what do you call it, hard drive, RAM, install this, install that, you know, struggle, you sweat, you know, you clean up your, you know, just to make sure that you set up your um, SQL server on on-prem, on your premises. When you say something is on on-prem, that means you have a physical machine. Then when you say it's on-cloud, there's no physical machine. Azure, everything is being taken care of. Everything is in cloud. You just come, come with your code, come with your, with your cell, with your hand, just come do your thing. So that's what we're talking about, Azure SQL. So we're no longer talking about the on-prem, we're talking on Azure. So Azure SQL, we now say, is a cloud computing database service. So database, this time around, Azure now offers us a database as a service, which is the Azure SQL. So it is offered by Microsoft Azure platform, which helps us to host and use relational SQL database in the cloud without requiring any hardware or software installation. We do, don't need to sweat. So we need to, the, the, the time we use, or the time we rather use, you know, you know, trying to set up our, our um, hardware, we can just focus on, you know, doing our development. So just a minute, please. I can, I'm getting some notification. Okay. All right. So that's that about Azure SQL. So everything is in cloud. Whatever we're doing, we're doing on cloud. Then, I talk about SQL versions and editions because this is an introductory um, class or section. We just want us to know everything around SQL and then Azure. Of course, 
there are different SQL versions and editions over time. Um, we are from 2018, I think even before 2000, you had different versions. Okay, 2012, 14, 16, 17, and so on and so forth. I think the latest, so in one in all of these versions, and I think SQL Server 20, 2019 is actually the latest edition. And then I think the last build, in all of these versions, they have what they call build. Build is like, uh, maybe we know when you have version um, 15, uh, 15.012, 15.013, where, where, whereby some additional features are already had it. I think I have less than a minute or two. So the, I think the latest build we have for SQL Server 2019 is actually, uh, it was done, updated August, 2021 and that's our last month yes so like so you can go with the versions you know follow the versions and then read documentations and you see what has changed what has been added and then the future that it now offers then what else again so how do you determine which version and edition of sql server database engine you're running yeah there's a way you can actually detect that there are over there are about three to four methods that you only pick up two uh, you can connect to the SQL Server, blah, 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 blah. I think I have a SQL Server, the on-prem one on, on, this, uh, on this machine. Then I'll check that. Then, of course, you can also connect to the instance of your SQL, and then you run this following query. Just select, just run this query here. If you run this query there, don't mind me. I mean, I, I, I prefer query more than all of this other part. So I have my on-prem here. This is on-prem. So if you run this, select this, and then let's execute it. If that will work, beautiful. So. After executing this, it's telling me we have Microsoft SQL Server 2016 SP Service Pack 1, um, the kilobyte, blah, 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 copyright Microsoft edition, then the enterprise edition, the edition I have is the enterprise edition, 64 bits um, on Windows 10 Pro, blah, blah, blah. So this is how you know the kind of edition. This is one, one of the ways you can know the type of edition you are working with. And I think on the help, on the help part also, when you click on the help um, in the interface of the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, when you click on the help, you can actually see the versions you're also working with. You see the component name and you know, versions and what have you. Like I said, the build, this is 15 point, this is 15.0183, blah, blah, and what have you. So, so that is that about this. So let me see, let me click, 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 click what else again. And then, of course, determine the version I've talked about that. Then client, client tools, the um, Specific server management to, to actually gain access to server management studio. It's just that we use in this challenge with the database engine that was installed, and then we use this tool to access it. So I know it sounds a little techy, but it's like there's nothing there. So one minute for the next speaker, and then um, so on Azure, I quickly just run to so what a feature of um, Azure SQL that we all need to know. Because this class is this section is basically on Azure SQL. Now, Azure SQL, like in addition to what um, Shea has said, it has a long time backup retention. It enables backup up to 10 years. You know, there's a dual uh, replication, you know, which provides really good secondary database all over, you know, at different data centers for you. There's automatic tuning, business continuity, provisions for business continuity, there's high availability, you know, scaling database resources and what have you, automated backups, you know, mention them. Then one, the last thing I'll just mention, I'll just say here before I just run quickly to the slide, less than 30, 45 seconds, is that the way the design mechanism in Azure works is a little different from the way it works on on-prem. So Azure SQL database shares the SQL server, blah, blah, blah. It's compatible with all of these. And then where is the design? Where is the design? I listed somewhere. Oh, I can't find that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't find that. I have somewhere. But of course, the way the, the design, you know, um, um, the, the design behind Azure SQL, it has been done in such a way that it enables optimization. Um, uh, there is uh, um, scalability, you know, it takes away some of the, some of the little difficulties. Okay, I think I have it. Some of the diff little difficulties from on-prem that we usually express on-prem. We don't need to worry about how all of some of these cleanings, maybe um, how some of these cleanings are done. When, by the time you're done writing your query, uh, if you don't close it, everything will be open. And Azure has taken care of a lot of things. So um, that's just basically some of the, uh, what do you call it, um, advantages that Azure brings to the table. And lastly, how do you create an Azure SQL database? Like she said, you have to have a Microsoft Azure account. When you have the account on the portal, um, when you go on the portal, um, you, do, you just, you know, once you have the account, go to the portal, search for SQL database. You search for SQL database, then go with the SQL database. When you select it, 
you create a new database, very simple, straightforward, and then for you know what's happening, you get it started with Azure SQL. I know the time is a little short, uh, but I hope I've been able to do justice at this uh, this is the time. All right. So if you have any questions, like I said, just drop it in the in the chat box, and then I'll try to attend to them. Okay. Thank you for having me. I'm Michael at the point. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Michael. I have tons of questions, right? But yeah, like we know, there are no time to ask those questions. So I'm going to let you go for now. <laughs> Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure we have a long list of speakers that will be, you know, drilling down to all of what Michael has introduced us to step by step, like uh, our sessions every weekend, take us through all the bits and pieces of Azure Circle. So I'm just going to let Clement Dickey come up. He's our next speaker. He's going to be taking us on an introduction on artificial intelligence. Clement, are you there? Uh, yes, I don't know. All right. Yeah. All right. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, All right. Hear you. Uh, so, yeah. So my name is Clement DK and I am an IoT developer at Rugby. Basically, I do um, high level IoT like the cloud and the edge, then I do um, embedded also. So I'm also quite familiar with artificial intelligence. And during this session, I'm going to be taking you through the introduction to artificial intelligence, Azure AI in particular. So I'll be taking um, you through the whole services, um, probably um, scenarios where you can use them and probably examples of our uh, projects uh, using these services. So the first thing was AI, you know, like people are just people are just building applications out there and um, making machine want to do exactly or maybe close to what humans can do so that's it's not even close to even better you understand so that's like the goal uh so what humans can let's say stuff like vision um speech uh speech recognition so it's more like you are actually um, building an application that could be able to like um carry out those things that humans can and even do it better that's uh that's like a very um, um high level explanation of ai so like i said uh creating applications that can see that can hear that can speak and actually understand that that's like the main goal of it so microsoft has been like at the very first front or forefront of the whole the ai thing so you can see 2016 object recognition where their model was able to um, um, like carry out object recognition and it was very close, like very close to what a human could identify. So you can see 90, 96% and we can see the layers of the ResNet, the algorithm used, like the um, model used, the layers. And they have been both in speech and um, language, they've been at the forefront of it. So you can see the error rate of the object detection model I talked about. You can see Microsoft ResNet here, and then you can also see the error rate. You can see it's quite better that you can see others have been doing this, but Microsoft has had like a very big breakthrough in this in this aspect. Uh, so this is like a typical application of um, object detection. You can see. So what you see here is that this is a motorcycle. Then this here, you can see 0 0.9 for 3D is like the accuracy like how sure the model is that um, this is a motorcycle. So this is just how AI is, like they are able to predict and then they back it up by, okay, for how sure I am that this is this particular object, uh, yes. So you can see others, you can see that this is like a computer vision application doing object detection, like I said, and you can see that images far away, like you can see, um, it's able to detect this handbag and you can see how far the person is from the camera. All right, so. Azure AI. So um, 
basically, um, we're talking about Azure AI, we have the uh, um, AI apps and agents. We are talking about Azure Bot service, Azure Cognitive service. I'm going to talk about them shortly. Uh, we also have knowledge mining, where we have Azure Cognitive Search. And then we have machine learning. Uh, machine learning is like new oil where everyone are actually going into these days. We have Azure Databricks. We have um, Azure Machine Learning Studio. Uh, everything on the Azure um, AI inf infrastructure. So talking about cognitive services, it's more like the whole thing about AI. Talk about vision, speech, language, knowledge mining, search. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's 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 like. It covers everything, and I'm going to be taking us to each. So, like under the vision part of cognitive service, we have computer vision, we have emotion recognition, we have face and uh, speech, we have custom recognition, we have speaker recognition, language, we have knowledge mining. Where so like so many parts um, are distant. So, uh. So I'm going to talking about every of these things here. Talking about the computer vision API. Uh, let's say you want to detect. Um, let's say, for instance, object detection. You want to be able to detect. Um, let's say uh, this popular. Um, let's say, for instance, you want to be able to differentiate between a cat and a dog. You understand? So it's more like a camera is able to do that for you to be able to differentiate that. Oh, this particular image is a cat. This particular image is a dog. And then, like I said, the how sure it is is going to like label it with the um, accuracy beside it. Then the face API, you can actually use it to detect face. Guys, it to identify who this person is. If the person is a is a celebrity, you can be able to detect. So you can use it for use cases whereby, uh, let's say. Um, you want to actually find a criminal in a particular location. So then you have all the old CCTV cameras scanning through and then trying to like um, search for that particular person. When there's a match, then you can actually find the person. Then you have emotion API. Sorry about that. So you have emotion API. So I, I remember there's a project I did on this. Uh, it, it's more like I the way I used this API was that uh, I was trying to like come up with a project that will be able to like measure the um, measure the uh, productivity of a team uh, using their emotions. So it's more like you can be able to detect if they're happy, they're sad. Imagine you um, running an organization, or let's say for instance now you have like a clinic and you have nurses in front there and you won't be able to dictate how um the nurses are able to like relate with your cost with your customers are they always happy living are they always happy when you're around there so you can actually use um this um this particular side of ai to be able to like build an application around that uh so we have content moderator we have azure custom vision service for this azure custom vision service you don't want to use there are ones that uh, you don't want to use the one that can detect, um, let's say, everything. For instance, cats, vehicle, and this thing. Let's say you are just looking for specific things and you want your model to be that accurate, tailored for just that specific thing. Let's say you just want to detect, or, or for instance, a simple application is like you want to be able to detect when your pet leaves the house. So the only thing you're interested to recognize is just that pet coming out of the house and then you can get an alarm on your phone that your pet has left your house. So you can just create a, a, a custom vision model for this, for just the cat to be able to recognize, let's say if it's a cat or if it's a dog, to be able to recognize um, the dog. So immediately it leaves, you know that ah, this thing is only meant to recognize this and then once it detects this, you get a mail on your phone or you get an SMS. So you can use, uh, um, um, yeah, you can use that for um, those kind of scenarios. Then we have the video, indexer this thing can do a whole lot you can actually like be able to like get insights from a particular video you can get like every information that you can get from that video this particular um application can do this for you to the point where maybe location of where the team is at that particular and um, let's say there's a camera facing a particular place it can tell you like uh this is what i can see i can see a cop it, it can tell like the distance in which the person is from this uh so it's actually very rugged so using the api let's say like i talked about the computer vision you can see that this is uh you can see like look at what once you call the api you can see the various things that are returned you can see field confidence you can see that they show that this is in a field you can see there's a cow there 
can see how sure it is 0 0.9995. Uh, so uh, that's typical. That's like a typical response you get when you leverage this kind of APIs. Uh, you can see analyzing image. You can see that it can even like dictate how and um, try to predict how old that that person is and also the gender type also. This is also um, as among the face API. You can actually do this with the face API. I talked about it earlier. And then OCR, um, objects, character, um, optical, um, character recognition, uh, where you can be able to like, optical character recognition, where you can be able to like detect things that are written. So let's say for instance, um, you want to be able to build an application whereby vehicles are, let's say we are talking about the mall now, vehicles are trying to come in and are trying to like record the plate numbers of the vehicles that are coming in. So you can actually have a camera out there, then using this API, taking screenshots of every cars that are coming in and extracting the um, the plate number from it and then storing it in the DB somewhere. So this is like a typical use of this kind of uh, solution. You can see face detection, uh, you can get small things like maybe the person is surprised, like I talked about the uh, emotion detection. Surprise, if the person is happy, anger, you can see this. Like I said, the application I worked on, you can see you can be able to detect this kind of thing. Imagine if you can actually even use this to dictate or try to even sense when somebody is depressed or something, you understand? Maybe in a school, uh, you can actually even use this application to actually like um, tell if students are actually paying attention in the class by just trying to like check their emotions when a teacher is actually taking them on a particular course. Uh, so like I said, face API, you can do face detection, face verification, similar face searching, face grouping, where you try to match this thing, and then face identification, when you try to recognize someone. So I've talked about the video index already. I'm trying to be fast. So that, this is the custom vision I talked about, where you can actually like build your own um, object detection, like you can, if, you, if it's classification, if you just want to detect the object or if it's classification, you can do that. Classification, I mean that maybe when you take a picture and then probably you have a cat and a dog in it, then you can be able to tell you that, oh, this is a cat, or this is a dog, you understand? So yeah, so you can actually build your own custom application tailored for your own um, this thing, use case. For instance, now let's say you you run a bank and then you want to be able to detect, let's say, I know that yes, they have to scan you to know what you are having. Or let's say you want to like detect stuff like guns, sharp objects, you can actually like build a very rigid model using this custom, custom vision service so that you can be able to like check, you can be able to check if uh, maybe someone comes in with a gun and you're able to like um, alert the security services that uh, um, um, maybe there's a security alert and then they can actually go and um, go into actually team whatever is happening. So, so we have speech translation uh, from one language to another. So um, same this thing you can leverage the API. Uh, so the whole thing, I don't know if you guys have seen how Siri is. Maybe you can say one thing. Okay, let me just explain this whole process quickly. So you have speech, and what this one does is that this is the first model that digests this uh, speech information that's coming in. So it's able to like maybe tell what you're able to say. Maybe can you hear me? You understand? And then maybe like filter it to be able to say, okay, fine, this is what someone could really ask because someone can actually say, can can you hear me? Someone can actually say, can, can, can you hear me? You understand? Then from there, it's like takes it again to the next, um, this thing, model here. After it's able to tell that um, this is what you're actually um, trying to say, and then it can now break these words into pieces and then pass it, um, then, and be able to like translate it to the other language which you are interested in, and then back to speech, yeah. So another thing um, in this AI space, I talked about um, building of bots earlier on, is the language understanding intelligence service, Lewis. So you can use it to be able to dictate intent in what people are trying to say. For instance, now that you want to build this core conversational AI, whereby you are trying to chat, you are trying to build a chat application, and then um, let's say someone wants to book a flight. Someone wants to, um, you, you want to be able to detect the intent behind that so that you can be able to use it to be able to carry out that process for that 
person. So keep in mind that you don't have a customer, a, like a human person interacting with that person. This is a machine that you want to, you want it to actually interact with your customers. And then you are trying to make sure that this machine is able to detect or like tell what the person is trying to say and able to like carry out a particular process and then maybe get back to the to the customer with the maybe the answer that the person requires or yeah. So yeah, I talked about Louis intent. Uh, so yeah, another platform is the um, Azure um, machine learning. So you can, the beauty about this is that um, you don't really need to learn how to code to do this. You can actually like, um, you can actually just do drag and drops. You could, the whole process of training, uh, you predict, you even the whole parts where you have to play with the data, trying to like clean it out. You can do everything without writing a single line of code. And another good one is auto ML. With auto ML, you can actually like quickly like set up a pipeline from um, cleaning straight to like prediction and then you can deploy it for use. Uh, so yeah, like I said, you can use the drag and drop or you can use the, um, you can, if you know how to code well, you can use um, the uh, Azure um, machine learning notebook. So uh, there are some resources here that could help you get started. Uh, this is just an introduction. I did not touch all, but uh, I, I believe this slide will be shared with um, everyone at the end of this um, session. Uh, so yeah, I'll be taking questions. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Clement. If we have questions, we can please unmute and ask our questions. Uh, for now, I'm just going to display my screen as well. Please let me know when we can see my screen. So next week, we uh, I did mention that from next week, we're going to be having two different sessions, uh, a session for the data lovers and another session for the AI lovers. So for the data lovers, we're going to uh, learn how to deploy and configure server instances, server instances and <clears throat> databases for Azure Circle. So basically what Michael did today was more or less like an introduction of um, Azure Circle, but I did mention that we're going to, you know, be double clicking into this uh, Azure Circle and looking at how we can, how we can architect, how we can build, how we can work with Azure Circle. Then, of course, we're going to look at Azure Custom Vision. So that is going to uh, be taken uh, in the AI session next week. This, uh, we have a social media account. A social media account. So uh, we have our meetup, uh, our meetup group. We have our weekly event uh, group, which is uh, you know this uh, group that we have joined today, this Teams meeting that we have joined today. We have a Facebook page, Africa Data and AI FB page. Kindly follow us on Facebook, uh, follow us on Twitter as well as YouTube. So all of these videos are going to be uploaded on YouTube, so you can go back and watch them for reference purposes. Uh, and we also we would love, love, love to get feedback from all of us. So what do you think about our sessions? What do you think about our speakers? What, um, what other uh, topics are you interested in seeing us uh, take here? Kindly, you know, scan this barcode and let's have our feedback. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for taking out the time to be with us today and we hope that uh, this has been productive and exciting for us, and we look forward to more exciting sessions moving forward. Thanks also to all our amazing speakers that took out time to you know, be here for us today and share their wealth of knowledge and experience with us. So we're looking forward to having more amazing speakers next week. Thanks everyone, and see you all.